bin Dietrich Klinghardt, ich bin Arzt, seit über 30 Jahren tätig in den USA und neben mir sitzt Dr. Magda Havas. Sie ist, hat ihren Doktortitel in Umwelttoxikologie und Biologie, war lange Professor an der Kanadischen Universität und gilt weltweit als eine der führenden Wissenschaftlerinnen, was die Strahlenbelastung durch den Handysendefunk und andere Strahlenquellen angeht. Ich selber verwende ihr Wissen in meiner Praxis an der praktischen Arbeit, täglichen Arbeit mit Patienten, vor allen Dingen mit Kindern, autistischen Kindern, lerngestörten Kindern und Kindern mit ernsten medizinischen Erkrankungen. Uh, Magda, would you tell us just a few things, a highlights uh, from your work? I work with people who are electrically hypersensitive. These are people who are very sensitive to electromagnetic pollution in various forms. And some of the studies that we're doing is uh, with people who have multiple sclerosis. We found that um, people with MS who have a neurological condition, uh, when they're exposed to dirty electricity in their home or at work, uh, their symptoms get worse. And we've been in, in people's homes, cleaned up the dirty electricity with specially designed filters, and we found that their symptoms actually diminished considerably. Uh, mm -hmm. after we did this. The results were so rapid um, that when I saw the improvement after a few days, um, it was very hard for me to believe. And so we began to videotape them. And so we have actually video, video documentary of the before and after uh, the dirty electricity was removed. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very aware of it. And uh, in my practice, we using your knowledge you know, to help our MS patients and found out that the stator filters mm -hmm. that we're using for, for this also help a whole variety of other neurological illnesses, okay. you know, especially uh, autistic children or hyperactive children, children that cannot sleep, um, instantly uh, improve when the filters are installed in the wall. I have a question. Mm -hmm. How many um, how many people officially are electrosensitive and how many you think are really electrosensitive? That's a difficult question to answer because everyone has a different take on it. I think that probably 3% of the population has fairly severe electrosensitivity to the point where they have to stay at home in a clean environment because they become too ill. These people can't work. Um, if they're exposed to the electro smog, mm -hmm. they can't be near someone who has a cell phone. Mm -hmm. But I think probably 35% of the population has mild to moderate sensitivity, which means that they can tolerate the, the electro smog, mm -hmm. but they get headaches or um, they can't think clearly, they have poor short-term memory, they can't sleep. So mm -hmm. they have a lot of different chronic illnesses um, that's attributable to the electro smog exposure. Mm -hmm. You know, you're quite aware of it. Would you say something about the cumulative effect of all the sources of electrosmog? Because I know you have a beautiful lecture in science of that. What are all the sources of uh, electric nature that compromise our health? Um, I put them into four different categories. There's extremely low frequency electromagnetic fields. This comes from our use of electricity. So anything that uses electricity has an electric field and a magnetic field at a low frequency. And this has been associated with childhood leukemia and other types of cancers, for example. Um, there's something called radio frequency radiation or microwave radiation. And this comes from a lot of our wireless technology, the cordless phone, the cell phone, the cell phone antenna, uh, wireless baby monitors, a lot of different devices do that. Um, Wi-Fi, for example, is, is a good example of this. Um, and this has been associated with cancers. Um, it's been associated with symptoms of electrosensitivity as well. Um, it's affected people in, in a number of different ways. The third type um, is ground current, and this is something very few people are aware of. It was first discovered on farms with, with cows, and it affected milk production, but farmers are affected, and it's a problem in some uh, urban areas as well. And the fourth, which I think is, is a very important one that very few scientists know about, uh, is dirty electricity. And these are frequencies in the 
thousands of cycles per second. So they're not as high as microwaves, they're higher than the extremely low frequency. And it comes through our wires in our home and adversely affects our health. Mm -hmm. Can you say something about what the origin of this dirty electricity is or the many origins of it? There are a lot of sources. Computers are one source. Anything electronic uh, will alter the sine wave. So when with electricity, we have a nice smooth 50 hertz sine wave in, in Europe. And when you have dirty electricity from compact fluorescent light bulbs, from uh, plasma television sets, mm -hmm. uh, from any kind of arcing on wires, it becomes jaggedy. So there's high mm -hmm. frequencies on it. Mm -hmm. And it's these high frequencies that I think are making people ill. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just say something I think that's important uh, to mention that we found several uh, reasons why some people are more electrosensitive than others. One certainly is the toxicity of heavy metals in them, that metals that are stored in the brain and in the nervous system work as an antenna and amplify the incoming waves. Uh, these are people with silver amalgam fillings, mm. which really should be called mercury amalgam fillings. Um, but there's also implants, titanium implants, or uh, you know, hips, knees, um, and other sources. There's a lot of aluminum uh, these days in people, and it makes them living antennae uh, for this phenomena. And the other reason that we found, I think, is more exciting to most scientists is a genetic component. You know, we found that people with disturbed uh, genes for the detox pathways mm -hmm. are much more effective, uh, affected. And then especially people that have homozygous or heterozygous mutations of their genes controlling uh, MTHFR, that's the methyl tetrahydrofolate transferase. Mm -hmm. In short, that's the, the enzyme is controlled by the genes that in the brain converts folic acid or folate to the usable form of folate, which is called methylfolate. Mm -hmm. And without that, the brain can't work. And that, step, and that step is disturbed and probably responsible for much of the short-term memory loss when people are exposed and the severe, really global allergic reaction to it. And that gene can be bypassed with certain supplements mm -hmm. that fix that. And we found that people regain a, a significant amount of stability and can function again in these environments. Um, I wanted to uh, to ask you like a little mm -hmm. bit about the protective measures that you have come to know and to appreciate. How can we help people? Well, the first thing that we have to do for people is to minimize their exposure. And um, so if it's radio frequency, it can be shielded with different types of products. With dirty electricity, there's a very simple solution. And these are special filters that you plug into an electrical outlet, mm -hmm. and they will reduce it quite uh, substantially. Mm -hmm. So there are things out there to minimize exposure. But in, in addition to minimizing the exposure, you have to build up the immune system because the immune system is compromised. And mm -hmm. you have to detoxify the body, just as you mentioned, with the metals and organic pesticides sides, that sort of thing. And mm. I think you have to help people emotionally as well because they're so debilitated. Mm. And m many doctors aren't aware of this yet. So, you know, they don't get the support from their family. They don't get support from a medical doctor. And mm. it causes a lot of emotional stress as well. Mm -hmm. Based on your research, uh, I've helped several schools in England mm -hmm. and also in the U.S. to establish uh, in the classrooms to use the filters on the walls and everybody has observed that children are healthier, they learn better, they turn out higher grades at the end of the school year. Would you say something to that, what your knowledge is about that? Well, we actually started doing research at schools. We went into a school, we filtered it, we um, surveyed the teachers and found that their health improved dramatically when the filters were placed in the school and student behavior improved. Um, mm -hmm. There's a school in Wisconsin uh, that had sick building syndrome and they cleaned up the chemicals, they got rid of mold and, and the teachers and students were still sick. They found that when they filtered the school, um, migraine headaches went down, allergies uh, went away, and 37 kids who had asthma and needed to use inhalers stopped using them. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just a phenomenal response mm -hmm. to the filters. Mm -hmm. 
For the public, I just want to say the filters are small boxes that are plugged into the wall outlet and every room should be measured and depending on the measurements you may need two or three filters for a room, for a classroom maybe more. Um, but it's a very affordable technology that makes a huge difference for the health of everybody and in schools and universities of course for the learning. I'm very concerned about the electric pollution in hospitals. Many people die in hospitals because they can't tolerate the electric fields of all the machinery and so we are right now working on trying to get that into the ICUs and, and other places. I know that in Sweden they have special wings in hospitals that are electromagnetically clean for those patients who are sensitive. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also would like to say that <coughs> there's a difference between electrosensitivity and electrosensitivity. Yeah, there is the people that are allergic to electric phenomena and they're the ones that are symptomatic. They know it's not good for them and they stay away from it. Those other people that don't feel it are still affected on a cellular level. They still will have the same cancer rates and the same rate of Alzheimer's disease, and the same rate of Parkinson as the ones that are electroallergic. And so I think that's important for the, uh, the people seeing this to know that this is an issue that affects everybody, uh, whether you know it or not. Why don't you say a few other things from your other mm -hmm. research? Well, we do research with... It's a joy um, to be with you, by the way. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure, too. Um, I've worked with people who complain about heart palpitations, and we did a study with them where we exposed them to radiation from a cordless phone and uh, found that when we did a heart monitor and looked at heart rate variability, that um, some percentage of them, and it's not clear what percentage, had a very rapid heart rate, had an irregular heart rate. These people feel pressure in, in the chest area. And many of them tell me they think they're having a heart attack. So they go shopping in a, in a mall where there's a lot of Wi-Fi, a lot of technology, and they have to leave very quickly because they become so ill. So I think it's important for doctors to know that this can actually affect uh, their patients, it can affect children in schools, um, and uh, it can really interfere with their learning. I'd like to say some uh, concluding things here. As a, as a physician, we've noticed when uh, people, patients move into a highly electromagnetically contaminated area, the average heart rate goes up. And we mm -hmm. can just simply monitor the heart rate. Let's say it was 70 for the last 20 years of this patient, Mr. So-and-so, and suddenly it's gone up to 82 and stays there. Mm -hmm. I simply can assume that somebody has installed a smart meter in the house that there is a new cell phone tower close to them, or that they did the stupidity and introducing Wi-Fi into their homes, bringing a cell phone tower inside the house. And so the other uh, thing that we're monitoring is the cholesterol. We found out that cholesterol goes up when the electrosmog goes up, and it goes down when the electrosmog goes down. This is in people that don't smoke, they eat a good diet, mm -hmm. They, they are doing everything right, they're exercising, they can't get their cholesterol down. The moment they remove themselves from the electric environment, it goes down. So these are two th simple things that people can have monitored easily. Mm -hmm. We've also looked at blood and we've measured, um, looked at live blood samples and we found that uh, certain people who are sensitive, their blood begins to coagulate. So I think you were the one who mentioned blood should look like red wine, mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like tomato ketchup instead. Mm -hmm. And this can affect the heart, it can lead to stroke. So there's a lot of very serious potential consequences from this. Mm -hmm. And things as simple as, as compact fluorescent light bulbs, these energy efficient light bulbs are actually harming people and making them quite ill. Maybe uh, for the end of our little talk, maybe say something, because that's I think very, very exciting, your research on the compact fluorescent light bulbs because that is something people can still have control over. That's right. Well, um, most people who are electrically sensitive, one of, one of the very common symptoms among 80% of them is they can't tolerate fluorescent light bulbs. It gives them a headache. It makes it difficult for them to concentrate. They get tired. They get aches and pains. And so we actually measured a large variety of light bulbs to see what they emitted. And they vary enormously, but most of the CFLs, the compact fluorescent light bulbs, emit dirty electricity. 
they emit radio frequency radiation, and they also emit ultraviolet radiation. Mm -hmm. So in Canada, our health authority has said, don't sit you know, closer than two feet to one of these light bulbs, so you shouldn't have mm -hmm. it on your desk. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do, you shouldn't be there for more than three hours mm -hmm. because of the ultraviolet. So mm -hmm. they contain mercury, um, and if they break, you get this neurotoxic mercury in your environment. So they're one of the worst things that uh, governments, you know, insist that we actually use these energy efficient compact fluorescent light bulbs. So I wanted to thank you, Magda. I think our time is up uh, for this little presentation here. Thanks for coming here. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me.